Hello everyone, this is John from Latherhog, and here we have Gerard from uh, West Coast Shavings Daily Shave, as well as Hey Gerard Shaves on Instagram. Hey, what's up? Hello? <laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? Thank you for having me, John. Oh, my pleasure. And what we're doing here, guys, is a bit of a wet shaving video podcast. So uh, I've had the pleasure of talking with Gerard, um, mostly on Instagram, uh, at just about various shaving topics. We have a lot of overlap. We also like cooking and food. So uh, we thought we'd maybe try to spin it out into something um, a little more interactive, uh, a little bit topical as well. So you know, this is episode zero of a eventually you know, titled program. We'll, we'll think of something <laughs> pretty soon. And um, what we want to start it off today was giving a little bit of background on how we got into wet shaving. Um, so, Jordan, I wasn't sure if you want to, would it make more sense for you to go first at this point? Yeah, I know it's fine. Um, yeah, I think like uh, many shavers, uh, I primarily got into it because I was just sick and tired of um, spending so much money on cartridges. Um, I think at the time, um, I think it was the Chez Quattro or whatever was after the Mach 3, you know, and I just didn't want to spend uh, $20, $25 on four cartridges. And I'm not really a fast grower as it is. So, um, but I do have to shave somewhat, you know, frequently. Or, and, and so um, it just wasn't a pleasurable experience. So I ended up looking on some stuff. Um, ended up journeying over to Amazon and uh, picking up the Mercure 23C. I think I had I got like a hundred pack of uh, Derby Greens and some Ferrasso, and that's pretty much how I got started. And that was in 2011. Um, I actually can still look up my my original order from then, so that's how I know that's that's how long I've been doing it. And then since then. Um, I pretty much shaved with just that uh, for probably at least like five years because I just wasn't interested or actually I wasn't even aware of like uh, like the artisanal scene or, or that, that there were different companies and artisans out there making brushes, um, soaps, splashes and, and uh, men's grooming products. And then um, I met uh, Abraham, uh, who a lot of people know in the community, um, also worked for West Coast Shaving. And He's the one that uh, introduced me to to the entire world, and it either all went uphill or downhill from there, depending on uh, which way you want to take it. <laughs> and so uh, he also asked me to to um, do some of the West Coast Shaving Daily Shave videos when they launched that series, and so I've been doing that. And uh, just a couple of months ago. Um, decided you know like you know i kind of want to maybe dive in and see what else is out there so that's when i started the instagram account because i wanted it separate from the personal account and i kind of used that you know focusing on that for for the hobby awesome well i think uh my story is very much the same even to the uh what year I started, I believe it was 2012. And same thing, I, I do keep my kind of order invoices. And I'm pretty sure it was 2012, uh, which was uh, the order for my first razor, uh, a Macora 34 HD, mm -hmm. HD 34C. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was get those um, backwards. But same thing, uh, I don't have to shave a lot, but probably average every other day. And it was always uncomfortable. So whether it was, I think I used a, one of the mock series as well. It was like orange and blue. It looked, it looked a nice enough razor, but the cartridge never gave it's that quite. Fusion. Oh, okay. It's been so long, but yes, the, uh, the, the Gillette Fusion. Or on alternate days, I'd use a uh, electric uh, electric razor, and that just always always had razor burn, even though it's like, oh, you know, there's not much stubble or whatever. So got pretty tired of that, and then came across an article on a blog that I... I haven't read it in a while, but I was reading regularly at the time, which was the uh, Art of Manliness. And mm -hmm. I, in talking with other folks, uh, they pointed to that article, uh, How to Shave Like Your Grandpa, um, at, at, and how they got into wet shaving. So that really piqued my interest um, kind of pretty quickly and enthusiast, 
enthusiastically uh, dumped cartridge razors from at that point. Uh, the brush, as far as brushes, and this is a topic we both like talking about, but um, I, my first brush was the Vanderhagen Boar Brush, which came with like a um, soap bowl, soap bowl and brush. And that, that got me, you know, got me through for the most part. Were uh, they selling that on, uh, on Amazon or did you get that at Target? No, I found it at a local pharmacy, which uh -huh. was a Rite Aid, <laughs> a Rite Aid I still go to, um, that has since become a Walgreens. So yeah. Well. I was lucky. I was lucky enough to find the set. They only had a few on the shelf, and um, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that's really stocked at Target or even the other stores anymore, um, as far as what's available in the brick and mortar. So, you know, that was kind of my setup, and also very similar to you. For about a good like two, three years, I had that brush, that razor, and then I settled in on um, Parasso Green. But the Parasso Green that's made for, uh, what do you call it, uh, Bath and Body Works. So the, the CO Bigelow. Um, oh, CO Bigelow. In the green, tube? Green tube. So, so you know, eucalyptus tube, and menthol. Toothpaste, toothpaste yeah. tube. Toothpaste looking tube. But that really did the trick. And uh, at that time, I think I experimented with other aftershaves and, and other things. And it didn't take until I hit some forums and message boards uh, online that really opened up the world. Eventually, once I hit uh, soaps, uh, it kind of went all downhill from there. <laughs> it brings us to today, where I'm, you know, still, still, really interested in seeing what artisans have to bring to the table. Um, much more interested than what's in much more variety than what's available over, you know, over the. I keep wanting over the counter, but you, you know what I mean. In, in brick and mortar stores, yeah, in other places, things like that. In other places, and um, as many people, you know. Um, who, who follow me on YouTube or Instagram know scent is a big portion and I got into fragrances via wet shaving. It was through the aftershave journey for, I tried a lot of the old school aftershaves. I'm like, this just, it smells too, uh, <laughs> too old, old for me, but it got me more into colognes, which, you know, there's uh, just, just much more wide variety of, of styles and whatnot. Um, and that continues to today. Nice. So, yeah, that, that's that's how I got into it. So now that we shared a little bit of our backgrounds, kind of where we're coming from, how long we've been in, uh, into wet shaving, uh, the topic for today is, uh, I, I feel like a lot of folks are talking about it, a lot of YouTubers have been giving their thoughts on it, and that is the Gillette Heritage Inspired Safety Razor, Double Edge Safety Razor. Mm -hmm. So you've seen this, right, Gerard? What, 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 yeah. what are you thinking? Um. Well, first off, uh, I want to say first, I'm glad. Okay, so um, I, from what I understand, for those of you that don't know, um, Gillette has not released a safety razor probably in over 30 years, or if not close to it. Um, and so this kind of just popped up, I believe, I don't even think they did an announcement. I just think it showed up on Amazon and someone saw it and then word got around, hey, is this real? Was Gillette really releasing this razor? And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad they're, they're doing it because truth be told, they don't have to. I mean, they're making money. I think no problem with the cartridges. Um, I think you might see like, like I think there are reports that, you know, sales are somewhat down uh, and, and whatnot, but that doesn't mean that, you know, this is going to pull them out of the hole. So um, mm -hmm. I'm glad that someone up there said, hey, uh, let's try releasing a safety razor and see what the response is. And I think the first batch like ran out like within a week. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and then they had to like do another reorder. And so you can get it on there for 35 bucks. I do not have one. Um, I've thought about it, you know, but I, if I was going to get it, it would strictly just be for nostalgic purposes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, you know, I don't know if I'd use it um, on the daily, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely like a, a fan, even if I don't have it, I'm a fan that they're, you know, dipping their toes into the water, if you will, you know, as far as safety razors and traditional wet shaving products are, are concerned. Yeah, I think I'm very much in a similar camp in that, I'm not looking to, um, well, first I didn't, I didn't pick up this razor, uh, not yet at least. Uh, I think the most attractive part is kind of the throwback old school appeal of the case itself. Cause everything, you know, everything that's been said about the razor is that 
it is a German head, whether it be a mule, recur, either way, it's a familiar, it's a familiar style. It's a, a lot of people are bummed that it's not a reproduction of one of the existing Gillette, you know, the very iconic Gillette models, whether that be a tech or, a, you know, a twist to open, <laughs> a twist to open, I think, the wet shaving for uh, the world would have just like their minds would have been blown if a, if a twist open, a new twist open hit the market. Um, but I very much think the funniest thing I came across is that they'd used Amazon as a Kickstarter <laughs> to, to yeah. figure this project and to, or proof, you know, kind of a proof of concept kind of thing. And, and it's true. There's no marketing. It's total word of mouth, but it, with zero marketing, I like get how much, you know, people are talking about it. Imagine just like, if one ad had dropped for it, I, I can't imagine. I mean, it, it might have confused like your your average oh. person not to what you like. What what is this? A single blade? <laughs> so I just thought of this just now. Can you imagine? Because I mean, they just released it for the holidays. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine Super Bowl time comes around, and all of a sudden you see a Gillette commercial where they go through and make some of the other ones, and at the very end, the last racer they use is that Heritage Edition or another one that they use. Yeah. I, I would go, I'd be like, dude, what is going on? What is going on? So. Right. And, you know, from last year's Super Bowl, they already have a little reputation for controversy. So why, why, not, why, not, why not just continue that trend <laughs> with, with going old school? But yeah. um, I do think it's, uh, if it keeps selling out, and, you know, I think traditionally uh, the, these Razor sets with the cases and whatnot were, you know, it, it, that in itself is a throwback in where, oh, you know, buy, buy your father, buy your, your brother, whatever, your loved one, a new razor, this new Gillette in a fancy case and everything like that uh, around the holidays. So, I mean, I, I think the timing of it's pretty, pretty cool. And uh, I'm not sure what I'd see because from what I understand and from everyone trying to produce a twist to open razor, that, that's why I really want to see it too. So. <laughs> But for them to produce a new one with uh, the cost today, yeah, I don't even know how much it would be. I, if, if it would be just like above $50, I'm not sure because, you know, how many they would make at a time. Um, if the interest is there even to make you know, like, like thousands of them. I think, I mean, for 35 bucks, you know, um, for the one, the, the Heritage inspired razor right now, mm -hmm. I think that's, pretty much the sweet spot because I think they realize that's pretty much what the going price is for most uh, equivalent razors, you know, whether it's um, uh, like number 434C, it's I think around 40 bucks. Uh, I think you yeah. can get a D89 or around that as well. Like that's sub $50, you know, like range. Sure. Um, you know, if you're going to go above that, like you'd better, you know, it would be, it better be special, you know? Um, and at the same time, I think, uh, because again, people that are probably on Amazon are doing the same thing that we did, you know, all those years ago, just mm -hmm. typing in, you know, traditional razor or safety razor mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Gillette just wants to be the first one there. They don't want, you know, the, the 34 C or, or the, for Edwin Jagger to be that first person in the slot. Right. You know? Um, but, but again, like, let's see, let's see what happens. If this is just a one-off and they're just like, okay, we're happy that we sold it. And then they just walk away. Then they just walk away. But I have, you have to figure that, you know, someone over there that they're just like, this already sold out once. It's mm -hmm. probably going to sell out in the second batch. Like we may have like rediscovered something here and it's like, yeah, that like, people don't want to spend $25 on four cartridges, 20 if you're a, if you're a Costco or Sam's Club member, you know? <laughs> right, right, totally. And it is funny to think um, uh, that the, the, the cartridges obviously, it's, you know, it's not the razor handle, right? Where the, the cartridge razors, razors are uh, a source of, uh, source of income for them. So it's supporting a safety razor, kind of shooting themselves in the foot, right? And I, I don't think so, because as of right now, it is still kind of a niche thing um, where, where people who are really into it are really into it. But I, I think, I'm sure you've seen advertising where sa uh, shaving with a safety razor cuts down on environmental waste, right? And so there's this, this green kind of angle 
that I've seen being pushed, which I think it's great. I, I don't think it's enough to push someone totally into it, but as far as lists of reasons to do, you know, to do wet shaving, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely, it's not a bad idea. I think, I mean, and this is just, again, I'm, this is just kind of like going off of it. Cause yeah, if they, they don't want to uh, cannibalize their own sales. Right. Right. So like, what would you do? Like, would you come out with like a premium stainless steel razor um, and then put it at like, you know, around the same prices, um, like a Carve or a Rockwell Success, like that hundred dollar, mm. you know, hundred thirty dollar, you know, like range. Um, make it all new. Make you know, make it something that that people can you know talk about, and then that won't affect your sales for the say the four cartridges, you know, that are even twenty five bucks or or whatever. You know, like you would probably get, you know, right in the range of enthusiasts um, over, over there. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. I think uh, keeping in mind what are the main, what's the main competition, right? And I think if you're going to start somewhere, this $35 range is, is perfect for folks because I, I can imagine picking up a handful of these for people like friends of mine, neighbors, or <laughs> whoever are getting into wet shaving. It's it's a mm -hmm. perfect gift, right? Because mm -hmm. it holds the razor nicely, it holds the tuck of razor, uh, the blades rather. Yeah, no, it's really classy. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot who sh who who it was. It was I don't know. There was a there was someone that was talking about the history of like specifically with packaging mm. and how the the heritage razor it's like probably reminiscent of the 30s and 40s and then in like the 50s they went to like a plastic kind of hard plastic case and then I want to say in the 60s or 70s they went to the traditional um, um, like paper cardboard with the plastic see through and and that's how like their, the packaging was the packaging has gotten significantly like cheaper in quality. Um, you know, um, and so, yeah, like packaging is, I think, important. I think it's something that we all, um, you know, if it can be done at a reasonable cost, mm -hmm. you know, and, and things like that. Yeah. Why not use good packaging? Yeah. I'm curious what your thoughts, thoughts are on, um, and you know, this could go beyond this razor, but because it's, it's brought up a lot, right? So Where's the razor made? It is, it's, you know, it's been said to be ger uh, German manufactured. And then the case, which I think is for, you know, for me, especially, I, I, it's a really nice selling point. Um, the case, I believe is Chinese manufactured. Do you think you know, in the long term, whether it's like the next project or even this, this very same one, you know, how is, how is that affecting like the country of origin? <laughs> like how is it, how is it affecting people's you know, opinions on buying it? Um, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. I think with my wallet first, um, you know, um, if, you know, the, if, if it's German made, you know, like awesome. If, if I knew that it was, let's say Chinese made, yeah, it would probably be a little bit suspicious, you know, in terms of quality control, things like that. Um, you know, um, would it still justify a $35 cost? Probably. You know, mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I, I think with that's just how I lean, um, you know, as opposed to say more like premium products where the country of origin definitely it comes into factor, um, like for me at least. Totally. Yeah, I, I guess since we're a little bit more into the hobby, we kind of know if a razor is Chinese made, right? There could be quality control issues, but also that there, there are only a handful of manufacturers that even um, some of the major retailers and vendors online are using. So it kind of gives us an idea at least, okay, we're looking at between 10 and 30, right? For uh, everything from a, a, a cheap razor to something a little more solidly built. So if we have that as a data point, right? that totally makes sense where um, versus the German razors, the bottom line, it, it is like, this seems like a really good deal for it. And my opinion, the case, I mean, as far as just like those kind of other similar goods, faux leather, what pack, pack, basically nice packaging in this case, right? It doesn't bother me that that part is Chinese made. Um, I, I, I asked that question, I guess, because I saw some folks who just wish everything was made in the USA. And that'd be great if possible, but I mean, 
that would also drive up the that, price. Then we're hitting oh, yeah. easily like fifty dollars or or more. See, like, would I, if it was all made in America, would I buy it at fifty? Like, probably. Would yeah. I buy it at sixty? Mm-hmm. You, right. You know, if it would it, going off. If it said if it said sixty nine ninety nine made in the USA, you know, like something equivalent. You know, I I think. I think they were very smart in, in how they approached it and outsourcing everything um, for making the cost as little as possible because, I mean, you know for a fact that they're still making a profit on this. I hope they're making a profit on this. I would imagine. Because <laughs> yeah. the, the design isn't anything new. The, you know, um, Like I said, I haven't used it. I know a couple of people that have, and they said it's slightly different than um, the Edwin Jagger DE89, mm-hmm. but it's there is a, just a slight difference maybe in the scallop uh, of, of, the, of the base plate or anything like that, mm. but it's close. It's, you know, it's close. And if you can get clones of that for say 15, 17, $20, you know, I guess, you know, put the Gillette stamp worth 35. Is it worth 65? Mm. Mm. Right. I, I think so. That, that's, the, that's kind of the threshold, right? Even the other day, I was thinking about like what are the different price tiers within the commonly of commonly available razors, right? So I'm curious to see what, where you draw the line. But I would say if I'm recommending a so-called budget razor, I think I'm looking at under south of thirty dollars would be a budget mm-hmm. razor. Anything under twenty dollars is like super super budget razor. Out of you know some other like, sub tier there, and then mid range. Mid range gets a little fuzzy for me, so let's say you know it, it'll be like thirty five to. I might cut it off around sixty five seventy, mm-hmm. and then even you know upper tier once you're hitting hit around ninety a hundred you know, uh, and, and then I think collectors are like uh, either one fifty or two hundred. I, I I don't have too many, um, too many of the numbers like you know like. Charcoal goods, Wolfman, um, the, the, the you know those those ra- the razors in that tier might be. I mean, that's that, I think that's that, that's where it kind of tops tops out, right? Yeah, I think um, I don't know, but I, I think I've seen like three hundred, like you know, mm. uh, uh, in the the super high high tier. Um, yeah, I would I would probably agree with that. Um, I think at, at that point you're definitely supporting. Uh, I, I, we had talked before, and I think you had described it as just basically like man jewelry. Yes. <laughs> you know, at, at yeah. that point, it's like it, functionally, if it's giving close to or you know equal to a, an experience of a significantly lesser razor, like why you're buying it? Because you know, because maybe you like the flashiness of it or something like that. Why? Like why can? Why would someone? buy a Rolex if they could just wear like a Timex like on their wrists. It's, it, you want that, um, you want it for yourself, you know? And and if you, if, if that's it's in your budget, dude, go for it, go for it. I, I'm, I think uh, both you and I have invested enough uh, in, in software uh, in this, you know, mm-hmm. to where like, oh, okay, that's a $300 razor. It's only like, like six or seven sets, maybe you know, of, <laughs> for me, so, you know. Yeah, sure. That's good. That's so, a good way. To, that's a good way to think of it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah I think so. that, that man jewelry, you know, analogy. It, it even the watch analogy. I like that because, um, you know, we need to tell time. Granted, a lot of folks are using their phones. I still like having um, a wristwatch uh, just because it's so much quicker. I don't have to turn on the phone or pull it out of my pocket or whatever. Um, but then it goes, you know, functionality, right? First versus fa- I guess really fashion. So like with the $300 razors, um, we're looking at what, like really nice polished finishes, looking at details of the razors that are just purely aesthetic um, and make for a great photo, you know, <laughs> photo for your shave of the day um, or, or to do a, a little, fle- you know, flex on uh, whatever social media accounts that you have. That <laughs> Here's the, you know, the fancy razor I use today. But uh it's, it is hard to justify, I, I get, I, you know, um, having razors in that range, for, for me at least, because, I mean, we should all spend within our 
spin with our, our means. No one should be taking a loan out to get the latest, greatest razor or, or, yeah. or brush. But you know what? Here's the thing. If they weren't selling out, then they wouldn't make them. So, you know, whether, you know, it's ultra high premium, like all of them, they're selling out. So who's, who, am, who, who am I to say, you know, like, you know, like people are buying them at that mm -hmm. price. And so like if, props to them, if, if they can do it, be props to them, let them do it, you know, for as long as they can, for however much they can. That that's very true because I think most of the um, the makers it, it is usually a one man operation or a very small small operation so that that's totally true. Um, it be, it, I'd be interested to see if the you know above the kind of the top tier above 150 200 range if there was if supply was not an issue would we you know will we see them actually be available on the website or is it still, are there other folks who are just kind of jumping at each release? Uh, maybe. And, and, and I mean, and we're only talking about safety razors, you know, we're not even talking about like custom straights that are out oh, yeah. there. True, true. And, and, and those are upwards, like they'll start in the 400, 500 going up to close to a thousand dollars because that's the only thing that that, custom maker will be working on for like two three weeks you know like if that so for sure like you know that's like it's both it's both functional and and artistic you know because you you know that um you know that was literally a, like you said a one-man operation mm -hmm. um and and you know the the stuff is just beautiful out there you know like um like one of the and one of the people who's super active that that he was actually one of my earliest followers is uh, Max Sprecher. And oh sure. Uh, and and I'm just like, dude, I just like love like looking at his stuff. But I'm not a straight razor shaver, you know, not yet. And if I if I if and when I do, you know, like like would he probably like be like my 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 grail, my holy grail of uh, yeah. uh, uh of straights? Probably. Mm. Probably. You know? Um all the other, you know, there's a couple of uh, West Coast Daily Shavers that, you know, that use his stuff. And it, they, they're just like, the, the smile is just like from, you know, from ear to <laughs> ear because they, they love it, you know, regardless of the price. They just know that it's like a fantastic product. So, mm. yeah, I think if, if a product is, is, is good, um, there will be a market for it. People will buy it. And if the product sucks, guess what? Like you will find out very, very quickly, you know. So that that's very true. Yeah, if if these things were crap quality, we we'd we'd have heard about it because I you know like any any hardcore um, kind of community, any hobby really, right? It's really you have multiple people doing multiple tests, really in depth, thorough. You know, they're trying a dozen different blades in it, or even different, you know other variables right that we just there's so many data points that uh, I, I'm at least glad you can make a pretty pretty informed decision if you decide to drop money um, on such a big pur purchase but I, I, I know we kind of um, went off on a little bit of a tangent from the uh, the heritage inspired Gillette razor but do, mm -hmm. do you have any, any kind of closing thoughts um, just on, on that release um. Yeah, just I mean, if Gillette, if someone in Gillette somehow watches this whenever it gets released, uh, you know, good job, <laughs> yeah. good, good thumbs thumbs up on it. I mean, they like, they didn't have to do it, and they did, mm. and and I I think that just that says a lot. Um, even if it's just uh, for them to you know just test the waters, I I think you know I think it's a good thing either way. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I, I have to say that while it's not a product for me, I'm very happy that this is on the market right now, um, that it's sold out, that it probably is going to sell, sell out again before the holidays hit. And uh, if this opens the doors you know, to additional, even honestly, if it's like once a year and they either reintroduce something or give us some sort of kind of throwback offering, I think that's great. And as I mentioned before, I think I might pick up um, not for myself, but maybe pick up one or two um, as gifts for people. I, I might either 
no one off the top of my head right now, but like in the coming year, right, have these kind of in, in my back pocket yeah. to get someone to wet shaving. It kind of takes that. I think it's, I think it's a very thoughtful and very good quality gift um, for people. And mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're a person that's, you know, like very new to it, pick it up. Just, yes. just pick it up. Yeah, that, sure. that's, tr- that's true. If you're, yeah, if, if you're a beginning wet shaver and are, are just borrowing hardware looking for razor, I say get it right now. <laughs> get you, could it. Do worse for, you could do worse for thirty four ninety nine. <laughs> okay. And then free shipping if, you have, if you're a Prime member could, or yeah. have access to someone's Prime account. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts on, on that. Um, for viewers out there, if you, you know, if you picked up the razor, we'd love to hear how you know, you're finding it in your shaves. Um, even if you just have opinions on it, do you agree with us, disagree? Uh, you know, please be sure to leave your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. Um, I think this might be a wrap for our first uh, episode, which I will call episode zero, since a little bit we're just mostly giving a little bit of a background and kind of throwing a little topic here uh, to get the, get things going. Um, so we just want to thank you guys for your time, uh, for watching this, and we hope you'll join us again uh, next week. Thanks and take care.